question. He's got a, he'll do his joke for you. I'll oh, do it. My name is Aaron Blythe, and I've written Ruby code for the last several years. Mostly I use a text editor, however, I really like to set breakpoints in a GUI. So I want to take you through my recent journey. We'll repeat the joke at the end. Okay, brother. Um, usually I use Sublime Text, but when I need to set breakpoints, I usually use RubyMine. The problem is that both of these require a license, one that my company's provided in the past, but um, I want something that's like open source. So for the last year, everyone's been telling me to use Atom which is an awesome project. The problem is that I cannot use it to uh, debug Ruby yet. Um, as you can see from the uh, readme, this, this is currently a work in progress. It's not useful yet. Please don't tell me about how I should learn Vim or Emacs. <laughs> if I'm SSH onto a terminal on a Linux machine, then I've done something wrong, and Nano is all I really want to use anyways. <laughs> so what have I been trying out lately? is Visual Studio Code. Yeah, the one from Microsoft, here on my Mac. I know, right? Um, it's completely open source, uh, as there are many things that Microsoft has been doing lately. So for the first five years of my professional life, I wrote Visual C++ code in Visual Studio 6. I'm sorry. Don't be. Uh, the language was aging even then. Uh, I used this until about 2007. It wasn't even used in the 98 C++ spec. And um, the IDE was fully functional. It had all the things that I need. So if you want to use Visual uh, Studio Code, the new one, um, first you have to install the extension, which is rather easy in Visual Studio Code. You just type in ext install Ruby. Then you have to add a folder called .vs code and a file called launch.json in that folder. This will configure where the debugger will look for certain things. Um, I simply started from the example for Ruby and then started working up from there. Um, to get this working, I had to run bundle install with bin stubs and vendor, which is something I don't usually do, because that pulls a bunch of extra um, things into your project. It also takes a bunch of extra time, because it takes a while for that to run. Um, so I also use RVM for over the last six years, and I don't intend on switching, no matter what anybody says. It allows me to wipe the slate clean much easier than anything else I've used. So I just use RVM and upload, start over, and start building on my gem sets again. So I need to use that. Um, so to be able to use that, um, I have to be able to set the um, bundler inside of VS Code. And this took me a couple of hours. Like, you can't just use the binary. You have to use the wrapper around it um, that comes directly with RVM. So what does that wrapper do? Well, we just cat that out. We cat out the file it talks about. And basically, it sources an environment that sets up your RVM installed as Ruby, so the one that I want to actually use, so that I can use bundler in the context of that Ruby. Um, I added a comment out to the only issue on VS Code Ruby that I could find, which is already closed, but I figured that someone else might have a headache um, from this, so I wanted to help people out because I'm a community member, you know? Um, but I wanted to confirm that I could actually get this working. Um, so here you have the GUI, and I'm hitting a breakpoint in a simple Ruby program, complete with a call stack, variables, and watches, which is, in the past I could only pretty much do in RubyMine. Uh, I've tried a bunch of other tools, I can't get it to work. Um, so what about Chef and Test Kitchen? Well, you can easily run Kitchen Verify, um, also setting things up in launch.json, and I got Inspect working too. Um, it's, it's fairly trivial um, to get working. But again, you have to run that bundle install with bin stubs and bundle install with path vendor, which is not natural for Chef, and pulls in a whole bunch of files. It takes time, and it you know, takes a bunch of extra space. But here you can see, down at the bottom, I ran um, Kitchen Verify, it ran all of my tests that I pulled in from Inspect, a bunch of them failed, got work to do, but I did it all inside of the um, thing. So the key here is I finally got a button to push to run Kitchen Verify, which was huge for me. So if you want to follow what I just showed you, it can be found here on github.com slash Aaron Blythe, my VS Code helpers, and you can check that out and then push those into whatever project you're using. Um, I plan to blog on this and post it in our Slack. Um, the next thing I'm going to work on is at DockerCon this year, there was a keynote that showed you that you can use VS Code to attach to a running Docker uh, container and live debug by setting breakpoints on a Node.js application.
application. So I plan to do this for Sinatra. So I welcome these new Microsoft uh, and all of their people. Apparently I'm not the only one. Here's Linus last week chilling with his buddies at the Microsoft. So, wowzers. Can we hear the joke now? Mike. So guys, I got another one. Um, but first, let's just repeat the first joke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do, What do you get when you cross a mosquito with a mountain climber? What? <clears throat> Nothing. You can't cross a vector with a scammer. <laughs> The next one, there are 16 types of people in the world, the, those who understand hexadecimals and death the rest. Yeah. <laughs>